All right, so this is update four of the RC car build, and I'm just gonna jump straight into Fusion and show you what I've done. So as you can see, the car's changed quite a lot since you last saw it. And one of the biggest changes is the width of the car. So you can see here, I've added two extra batteries. The reason I did it was, I did some testing of the outputs here of this uh, H-bridge, and my motors are obviously 12 volts each, and they were only getting around 10 volts. So I wanted to get as much out of the motors as possible for this design, obviously. So I just thought, why not chuck an extra two batteries in, and that surely enough fixed that issue. I, I've now got 12 volts going to each motor. The second thing is obviously I've added this extra battery pack here, and as I mentioned in the previous video, the reason for that is because I was having some power issues with the H-Bridge board. It does have a 5 volt output here on one of the terminals, but it just wasn't able to supply enough current to steer and power the motors properly at the same time. What was happening was the server would just cut out randomly because it was um, just drawing way too much current. The other thing I've done which is super awesome is the steering. So I've managed to model the steering here in Fusion 360 and it was a bit of a challenge but I got there in the end. And in order to do it, I had to model these um, steering rods. And if I open one of them here, you can see, you know, these are something you can buy off the shelf. And I tried to sort of 3D print something for this, but it was too difficult. But these basically allow you to steer. And because of the way the servo moves, you kind of get a lot of twisting when they're pushing the steering arms left and right. So you need something like this that has a ball joint and a rotational element like this. So you can see I got a bunch of joints working here. So this one rotates all the way around. And then in the end here, you've got this little ball joint, which allows that freedom of movement when you're steering. And then I was able to use those here. And if I just show you the steering working, so if I zoom in a bit, and I drag the servo left and right, you can see it moves the wheels. And that's pretty awesome, right? And you probably saw this on my Instagram. If you don't follow me on there, highly recommend you do it. I'll leave a link below. I always post updates to my projects there. And then I make a video here some couple of days later. So make sure you check it out. So that's basically it for this version one design. And now it's pretty much ready to 3D print. So let's go do it. So this is the finished prototype and I'm super happy with how it turned out. I learned so much building this thing which was the whole goal of this mini project and you know I've never designed anything like this before especially in CAD and to build something functional in CAD that I was then just able to replicate in the real world and have it behave the exact same way that was really really cool and it certainly inspired me to keep doing things like this going forward. One of the things that surprised me the most was the strength and the flexibility of this PTG material. And if I flip the car over, you can see here, this is where I made the join, where I printed the chassis in two separate parts because my Prusa Mark III obviously has a build plate limit to what you can print. So I had to do it in two parts and I create this slot here where they just slot into each other and then I super glued the edge. And you can see just how strong that is. You know, I can press down on that really hard and that's not going anywhere. And it's the same on the front here, you can see the flexion in it. And you can also see the chassis really start to twist when uh, I do the demo of the servo. And this is a good thing and a bad thing. It's good to have some flexibility, but the amount of twisting that was going on, um, it's not really good. And that's mainly just due to the chassis design. 
it's not a proper chassis design for an RC car. It really wouldn't last too long outdoors. It just start vibrating. There's so much vibration, you know, when you're driving over uneven ground, and it'll essentially just start to disassemble itself. I'm gonna make a lot of changes in version two, where we fix and correct a lot of these issues. But I'm sort of learning by discovery, learning as I go. As I said, you know, I've never designed anything like this before. I have learned so much doing this little project, and all of that will be taken and implemented into my version two, which I'll talk a little bit about. So the version two is gonna be a really ambitious build. I wanna try and you know steer away from the typical RC car. I've kind of done that here anyway with the way I've gone about making this. So I'm running a microcontroller, um, which is actually controlling the servo and the wheels. And the benefit of using something like this is I can independently control each wheel. Um, I can control the speed of it, um, how much power goes to each one, and using an embedded system allows you to implement things such as PID control loops, and I can even implement things such as uh, differential depending on the steering of the wheels, right, the angle of the servo. And all those are things I'm going to implement in version 2. So the goal for version 2 is I'm going to upgrade all the hardware, I've already ordered the parts, they're going to arrive in 3-4 to four weeks from Canada, and I've got 4 independently driven wheels and there's going to be four ESCs on the car, uh, a LiPo battery obviously and that means I can ditch all these double A's which are very very heavy. Um, this is quite a weighty thing and the car itself as it stands is not very fast. It takes a while to sort of um, overcome that stall torque when you start off and once it gets going then it can start to pick up speed. But yeah, the motors in here, if I flip them around, they're really, they're just things I had lying around. They're nothing special at all. They're just 12 volt, 1000 RPM. They're really not built for something like this, something of this weight. Um, they're typically built for smaller, lighter projects. But everything I've used here, I just had lying around. Uh, I did actually buy the servo. And, you know, I recycled the batteries from an old vacuum cleaner. Um, I've, this is an STM32 board from a previous project and the motor driver is also from a previous project. So to conclude the video, I'm really pleased with how this turned out. It's proven to me that 3D printing an RC car is feasible and it is, you know, it's possible. And as I said, I'm going to take everything I've learned from this and take it forward to my version 2, which will be my more challenging build and the one I'm going to take more seriously. I was able to turn this around pretty quick. And as I said, I'm pleased with what I've managed to do. Um, but from here, we're going to tackle some real challenging stuff. And just tackle some of your typical problems that you come across. You know, there's little things like stopping the nuts from coming undone when you're steering, right? Nylock nuts, they're a lifesaver. There's a lot of the tiny little things that you tend to overlook when you think of this at a higher level. And then you try and build it, and all those little things add up. I'm super excited to get started on version 2 and I'm going to share everything as I have done with this one. I'm going to make videos every week or every other week just sort of updating you where I'm at, what I'm doing and it's just fun right, I'm learning so much. I hope I'm able to convey that across in the video and you're able to learn stuff too. Just get stuck into a project, you know, that's exactly what I did with this. It's not the best RC car in the world, it has many flaws, many problems but I've learned a lot doing it and that's the important thing. So I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you stay tuned for the following videos where we start version 2. And I'll see you on the next video.